You, you also, um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I think you've on occasion sent large amounts of books to other countries where, where books are needed. Yeah, that's true. Need. That's true. Tell, yes. tell me a little bit of how you got it involved. In well, that. in uh, 1989, an organization called the United States Book Exchange, which was really a clearinghouse for backdate periodicals, uh, filed for bankruptcy. And in the course of the uh, bankruptcy proceedings, uh, I was selected by the then uh, Board of Trustees to try to revive the organization as a, again, a clearinghouse mainly for periodicals, despite mm -hmm. the fact that it was called the United States Book Exchange. It was really a, an exchange for periodicals between and among libraries. And um, I was named uh, president of the organization in 1990 or 1991, and we revived it. It was a membership organization open only to bona fide libraries, and it prospered from that time until really the early 2000, about 2003, 2004, it began to diminish in its importance because of the internet the well or more the, the digitalization oh, did yeah. i say that right digitization yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> of periodicals uh so uh whereas usbe depended upon kids in school clipping and otherwise uh removing periodicals from the collections of the colleges or public libraries that they patronized uh that ceased really to happen and uh, libraries no longer really bother to uh, collect or to replace missing issues and missing volumes or even to develop collections of traditional periodicals in the print form. One of the first things I ever bought from you uh, was the issue of the New Yorker which had J.D. Salinger's last story. In okay. It, Hapworth 16, 1924, mm -hmm. which has never ever been issued in book form. Really? Okay. But you can now get on the complete New Yorker. You okay, know, that, which sure. Which is all mm -hmm. uh, digitalized yeah. or digitized. Digitized or how, things. How, how, however it's, it's yeah. said. Um, uh, now, we're in quite a large building. This is four stories and uh, We have a basement stories? and three stories. And uh, we have approximately 40,000 square feet in this building. Our other building has approximately 120,000 square feet in it. And, and that's the one that used to be a hostess factory. That's right. That's I remember it's going over there and seeing the, yeah. the pipes from which Twinkies used that's to That's right. Spurt. That was uh, <laughs> the hostess bakery, which uh, closed in 1993 and which we acquired through purchase in 1994. Uh, still has pipes there with Twinkie sauce in it, as I like to call the stuff. It's a sugary sauce that uh, flowed through the pipes and filled uh, the Twinkies for many years. It's, uh, the legend is that the Twinkie was invented in that building in the 1930s. Wow. And uh, it too was closed by, I guess, government intervention. Uh, I understand that the FDA came to the hostess people at one point back in the early 90s and said, you've got to update all of your infrastructure uh, you've got asbestos here, you've got uh, stainless steel, you've got uh, steel pipes, copper pipes, etc. Uh, you've got conveyor, conveyors and conveyor belts that were uh, created when Woodrow Wilson was president, and you've got to update all this. Well, they couldn't afford to do so, so they closed up the plant, and a year later we bought it. And, uh, and they're using making Twinkies storage. elsewhere, I guess. Uh, they're making them, I think, down in Canton, Ohio. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, well,